You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another thought-provoking episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, and welcome to the show. My name is Rob, and uh, yes, I also would like to welcome you to the show. Really appreciate you hanging out with us for this, which is episode number 1060. Pretty exciting because of what that means in terms of how long you guys have been with us, and uh, it's just really cool. Appreciate that. So we'll hope to bring you uh, some great info today. Yes, That's very the plan. Very excited about it. Uh, this show is sponsored by our amazing community who constantly showcases that compassion and helping other people out and always seeking to be a lifelong learner truly do lead to success. Uh, with that being said, we're extremely grateful for everyone who has stayed in the community and really helps support us in supporting the industry. So thank you, seriously. All right, well, Rob, uh, I know that was a very long, heartfelt chat about (laughs) how much we are grateful and attitude of gratitude, but uh, why don't we go ahead and play that question? Here we go. Hello, I live in controlled airspace uh, for Tyndall Air Force Base, and back about a year ago, I called the tower and asked permission to fly, and they said that basically if I didn't go above treetop level, I didn't even need to call them that it was fine to fly. So uh, then I heard about the FAA saying you can't call a tower anymore and you had to use drone zone. So I filled out a request on drone zone uh, to fly. And uh, it said that I was in a 100 foot ceiling grid. And yet the FAA has denied my ability to fly recreationally, even though my request was to fly no higher than 100 feet. So what I want to know is, does that mean I simply can't fly or can I go back to what the tower had told me a year ago and just stay below treetop level? Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your your call very much, Stephen. And uh, yeah, that's that's gotta be frustrating because, I don't know, you, you just feel like you got things figured out. You're actually not really asking for that much. Um, and yet it's still not very clear what, uh, what this gent should do. So what are your thoughts? What, what would you do if you were in his shoes? Um, well, I, I, as someone who understands that I can make mistakes frequently and often, I think the first thing that I would do is try to resubmit uh, a Lance authorization. I think something that's not really clear here is, is whether he's a recreational pilot or whether he's a commercial part 107 pilot that may lead to differences in his ability to acquire the airspace approval or authorization, excuse me. Um, So that being said, I would make sure that, uh, you know, something that I see happen all the time is people getting denied on requests um, when they're utilizing an application, Um, something like UA Sidekick. I know that this glitch is is pretty prominent in some other applications as well, but if you make a little square of the area that you want to fly, so on the map you say, hey, this is the square I want to fly, Um, That square is typically drawn inside of the grid that's overlaid on the map. And that being said, if you draw a square, and let's say that his square is 100, but the square next to him is zero, Mm -hmm. if if his square is even on the line, I know the system will just kick it back and say, no, uh, you're not uh, authorized to fly. So I think the first thing I would do is try to eliminate any variables, eliminate any, any mistakes, make sure that the area that he draws is just like right over his house, it's within the square, and maybe even put that the height that you want to fly to is 99 feet. Hmm. You know, maybe that try help. little things like that. Yeah, um, because there's really no reason that you can think of that it should be denied, right? Well, there is a Other reason than, I can think of. Uh, do you remember when Kitty Hawk went down and their uh, requests were just bouncing from the FAA server and it was showcasing that you were denied? So. I mean, we've seen that with Kitty Hawk. We've seen that in, uh, I forget the other app that that was a huge problem. So what you're describing is a technological glitch of some sort, as opposed to something that he did. There could be numerous issues. 
True. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, sorry, I'm getting all flustered. Um, <laughs> you're right. There could be numerous issues because, again, server bounce. Um, let's say they updated the app and the old app or the app that he's using was going to, a, like, the wrong URL and there's no way for him to know that. Yeah, I would just try to eliminate any particular issues, you know? Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes we make mistakes. And, you know, if he wrote 101 instead of 100, it would have kicked him back. Sure. Okay, so, but the bottom line is, so his, I guess his um, very specific question was, should I just go back to the tower? And so the answer to that would be not, certainly not first, like retry the well, app, retry to get permission through Lance. The FAA did make it really clear they don't want people uh, reaching out to the towers. Right. But as a part 107 operator, sometimes uh, there are so many requests out there that uh, sometimes that's like your only option. And you have to go like to go do a tower tour or something and just mm. get to know those people and bring <laughs> them some donuts and whatnot. And you would be surprised uh, what that does. Sure. Um, now that being said, um, I think it's also extremely important to discuss the elephant in the room here. There's been a lot of sentiment and I think that the, the numbers in the industry are show, showing it as well. But I think his sentiment about the hesitation to fly doesn't want to get in trouble. I think that's actually increasing. And Which the is good in some respects. Yeah. I mean, sure. I would look, I would say the opposite, but I think it's also an opportunity because these people need to be educated. And I don't think that the, I don't think that the FAA does a very good job of, of educating the community as a whole. You know, that being said, um, I also don't think it's very clear what is navigable airspace. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, right? He said that the tower operator before said, as long as you're below the trees, you know, you're fine. Okay, well, where does that come from? Um, I think it's from the Cosby case, uh, the chicken farmer who had his chickens literally dying. They're killing themselves from going crazy from the noise of airplanes flying over his property very mm -hmm. low. Now, the Cosby case uh, is in our book, Live in the Drone Life, and I make a point in that book, but it's important to note that there has been case law from the Cosby case that has gone both directions. There is ownership rights. There are not ownership rights. You have the usable right of the airspace to the treetops. You have the usable airspace right to 83 feet. I mean, I've seen numerous interpretations of the case across the board, and frankly, it showcases that there still is not really a clear um, um, definition of what is navigable airspace. Right which became an issue recently as um, we have been, you know, getting into the Cinewhoop space a little bit. And, you know, we have our race course here, which is great for public safety. It's great for confined um, space training. And it's actually showcasing how the difficulty of that course is really testing vehicles. That military drone that was here yesterday, I, I was stunned, literally stunned. Anyway, that being said, what's important here is, um, you know, when it comes to... Uh, navigable airspace when it comes to flying indoors right we all we always know that flying inside is not the FAA's jurisdiction right right so if let's say I'm at a top golf right and I want to fly around there's no roof right on uh, on the the netting right but the netting would pretty much stop a drone from escaping that area pretty much as a whole sure right but if you had a flyaway, it could fly away out of that area and maybe go into uh an airport's airspace perfect example is the las vegas top golf mm -hmm. but what if you have a drone that doesn't have gps it, it can't have a flyaway because it doesn't have gps so or it's extremely limited in its ability to have a flyaway so what if we throw now a net over the top golf? Yeah. Right? I mean, this has actually become very clear in the fact of drone pilots flying um, baseball games and football games. When the roof is closed at a football game, guess what? If you're inside and you're hired to fly, you can fly all day long because there's a, there's a roof. So what about flying over people then, right? Because it's no longer the FAA's jurisdiction. Yeah. And so now this leads us to the question of, okay, with these Cinewhoopers, these super small drones, um, and even, hmm. you know, these new drones that operate on autonomous systems, they're flying below the treetops. They're flying in the tree canopies. They're flying where helicopters can't fly. They're flying where planes can't fly. So it, so what is navigable airspace, yeah, right? I, I would love to hear a conversation on this issue. I don't think we're going to hear one from who we would like to hear one from mm. because uh, I think it's coming down the ladder that the FAA says, hey, we own the grass to the heavens and everything in between. Yeah, th that would not even be... Uh, 
that's fine, but I would still question or want to know what's the justification or the reasoning behind not allowing somebody like this, for example, who, however tall the trees are, he's suggesting he wouldn't fly above those because, again, everything you're talking about, the idea is that no no manned aircraft is ever going to get down to where he'd be flying, right? And That's if, the point. If there's a helicopter down where he is, they have much bigger problems. Exactly. That, <laughs> that's exactly right. So, and I, you know, I suppose it's probably, it would be explained to us as, as it's more of a macro issue. And so we're kind of focusing on a micro issue and they just haven't gotten down to that level of regulation or whatever. Well, could, I But mean, I'm curious as to that line of thinking. And that seems like a really easy one to me to put something out on. It, it, uh, it seems easy to me as well, so but I, I also think that there are a lot of complexities of in course, this issue and a lot I'm of un unintended consequences because I actually think, imagine what the industry would look like. Imagine what sales would look like of drones. Imagine the, in, the industry growth as a whole if the FAA came out and said, okay, we're going to change things a little bit. As long as you don't fly over the treetops... You can you can fly around your house and you can you know fly in your backyard and all that. Now that's not what they're saying, but no. can you imagine the how the industry would look if there was something like that or something like a micro drone rule like what, what we see in Canada? Mm -hmm. How would that affect the industry as a whole? I think very positively. How so? Well, I think it would. Um, so it's a it's an economic driver, right? And so I think anytime I believe, I guess maybe this puts me in the libertarian camp. Um, um, well, that's where I am too. So I, I think that anytime you can simplify the regulatory environment that people are working within, as long as you're creating an environment where people aren't hurting other people or taking advantage of other people, then you're just making it easier for people to do the work they're trying to do to serve people, right? It just kind of makes. Not that my goal is for life to be easy per se, but why create complexity that doesn't need to be there when we have enough as it is, naturally? Maybe it's a factor of not understanding the practical nature of flight operations. That is very possible as it come, relates to me. <laughs> That's very possible. Not only is it possible, it's a fact. So... Do, I that mean, was not my point, but I appreciate you saying that, but that wasn't my point. Okay, what was your point? Well, I think I'm going to leave the point to be vague because oh, I want to okay. end this show and ask all of you pilots out there, when it comes to Cinewhoop, when it comes to micro drones and super small drones, do you think that drone pilots have an innate right to be able to fly on their property and beneath the, the treetops? And do you think there should be some sort of micro rule around that? And where do you sit on this issue? Because I really want to hear from the uh, I, I really want to hear from the industry as a whole because I have heard rumors throughout the offices of the FAA thing people and I can't say who otherwise I drone you would go away. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, people who are saying you know should we really have gone after Perker? Did that really serve us at all? Hmm. How, you know, because like now here we are still catching up and, you know, it's everyone in the industry is saying, you know, the same thing that's ringing my bell in 2020, which is number one, there's no standard of operations. And number two, we're really inhibiting the growth of the industry without clear and concise systems to allow for people to overcome some of these uh, waiver, these waiver operations like BVLOS and like autonomous operations. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think that um, ultimately and uh, you've got to run, but I think it's a situation where not knowing where to draw the line, a line is just not drawn. Exactly, which means the line is blurred, which means people are crossing it every single day. And the worst thing that could happen is if someone gets dinged or enforced upon um, just because they... It, just because while it says the FAA controls all airspace, that's quote unquote navigable airspace. Okay, well, let's define that. Let's do. I think that's a very fair question. I'm, I know there's a definition out there. I'm not stupid. But I, I think that we have come to a point in society where it's time to reconsider what that definition looks like. Right. On that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. Really want to hear from you. Comment below. Comment on our Facebook page. Tweet us. Go on LinkedIn. If you're an FPV racer, if you're a Cinewhoop guy, if you're flying a Mavic Mini through the trees into a house, if you're just uh, not sure about the rule and you think it should be a certain way, let's hear what you have to say. It's extremely important. My name is Paul. AskDroneU.com for your questions. And my name is Rob. Awesome. And give us some business questions. That's what we want. All right, guys. Thanks again. Thanks again.